Welcome to Lothric. I have the pleasure of sitting here with one really important man in one way. You have been involved in the sports world in many different levels and I want to do this more private interview with you and see where you are in life. You have passed 25 years old. How old you are, over 25, will never be revealed. Secret, secret. <laughs> One of your keys in, the, in your life, I know. You have a place where we are sitting now, in Thailand. You have a place in Costa Rica. And Mallorca you still go to. You are doing many things. And I'm honored to have you on my YouTube channel. So I just want to do a short introduction. So, how is today? Well, how is your life today? Uh, I'm continuing with uh, my own university. Uh, I started my own university in 1990. I left uh, the university uh, because I wanted to uh, work more with uh, life competence than knowledge. In the, uh, at the normal, ordinary university, the knowledge building is the main thing. While in life, the competence, how we use the knowledge, how we handle different life situations is an important thing. And it's very little of that in the schools and in the universities. So if we look at the uh, uh, relation between uh, school success and life success, it's very low relation. Yeah. And because of these uh, different goals, knowledge building in schools and competence building <laughs> in life. So uh, the goal in my university is to work with uh, life competence. And uh, in that uh, way, mental training is an important thing. How many languages is this school transformed to? Uh, language? Uh, yeah, we um, work, uh, we're working mainly in Swedish and then uh, we have uh, tried to spread it around the world. That's why we have this center here in Thailand where we are now. Uh, we ha I have a center of excellence training in Costa Rica and one in for North and South America. and. Uh, then one in uh, Mallorca, Spain for Europe and Africa. And this is in order to spread the excellence model. That's why it's called Center of Excellence Training and the mental training to, uh, uh, to other uh, countries in the world. Uh, but the, the main is still going on in Swedish and in Sweden. And, uh, in other countries, the emphasis has been uh, very much on the sport area. In Sweden, we, I started with the sport area, I worked with the national teams in the 70s and the Olympic teams. But after that, I tried to spread the mental training from sport over to school, over to health area, over to business, over to leadership. And the last uh, 25 years, the personal development, mental training for everyone has been important. In Sweden, uh, it's about three million people who have tried different forms of uh, mental training and often for their own personal uh, development. So that has been an important thing. So, so you are still working full time, even if you are older than 25 years old. No, I'm not old. And, uh, <laughs> if you work with uh, lifelong development, yeah. which is the goal of excellence training, yeah. then uh, 
it's important to feel that every year uh, is a development from yeah. last year. Uh, and that makes it very important because <clears throat> what you call um, aging or retirement is uh, uh, aging is very much a mental thing. Because but, uh, you have expectations, certain things will happen when you get older. Because my experience with you, I think I've known you 15, 20 years, uh, I'm not sure. It, yeah, it is that you have the same passion, the same focus, the same enthusiasm. When you, when you, when I meet you, you have uh, different projects in different parts of the world. All the time, uh, traveling, traveling. Yeah, this is because uh, if you know, and uh, I have so many examples of Sweden what help mental training has given to people. We have um, about half of them who have gone uh, long-term training in mental training yet say that this is the most important they have done in yeah. their life and 4% say that they have saved their life. So if you know how such a simple thing like mental training, which you can learn yourself, yeah. I, of the uh, people in Sweden, of these three million people, I have met uh, like a number of thousand only personally. The rest have used my books and my training programs yeah. on their own, without any physical contact with me. <laughs> and this is the most important in mental training, that this is something that you take responsible for yeah. and you have the uh, training made and this means that uh, it's possible to spread around the world without me having to go around the world and, and teach. So in the last book, the goal for me in the, uh, from now on has been to, uh, before 2021, to spread the mental training to half of the world population and before the uh, year 2037, to spread it to all people in the world. It doesn't mean that everyone 2037 will use mental training, but they will have opportunity. They have been offered the possibility of their mental training, which is so important. Yeah, uh, I want to speak in uh, the viewers must understand this is the father of mental training. And when I talk with people, uh, all pe many people they've heard about it, and uh, many people uh, in the business, sports world, the business world, they are doing a kind of mental training, and uh, but most of them they don't know there is a man behind it. There is like uh, suddenly there is uh, a big. Uh, movement who have pushed up. It's nothing new, but you have kind of documented and spread it. The reason uh, for mental training was that I was an athlete myself, and if you're an athlete, uh, you know that uh, performance can go up and down, and uh, even in the same competition, yeah. can vary very much because of things that happen in, in the brain. So, uh, and you also know that when you come, uh, when you have the perfect performance, you are in a flow state, where, uh, which is a very interesting state of mind. So when I came to Uppsala University, I was interested of, to find out three things, to uh, explore the relation between uh, mind and body, brain and body, uh, to uh, look into flow state, alternative states of consciousness, yes. and the third thing, what is possible to do with training, because training at that time was physical training, and personality you couldn't change. Uh, we talked about personality traits in psychology that were very stable, yes. but uh, this was because no one has 
try to develop training program to change also your way of being as a person. So that was the three areas I made research for 10 years. And also 10 years I published an article which I called mental training. And uh, many of my colleagues in psychology said uh, if you call it mental training, people will think it has to do with mental hospitals or mental patients. But I said, no, but I can give it a new positive meaning instead. And so I kept the name uh, mental training. In the defense, Swedish defense, we have called it psychic training, but it's about the same. Anyway, three, three weeks after I published the article, I got a phone call from the Swedish Federation in Athletic Track and Field and they said we heard that you started something called mental training and it sounds very interesting and uh, now we have a fight against Italy in uh, three weeks and we want you to come with down to Rome and then you will have the whole morning for <laughs> to introduce that for the team. I should never do that today, but I did that, <laughs> and uh, we lost the fight, and I couldn't see any positive effects of what I have been talking about. Uh, and of course, we understood that you cannot change by just listening. Mental training is something you do. It's like physical training, e even if you have two days about conditioning. Uh, and you know everything about condition, you don't get that the condition yeah, does things. Do they, you know. So then we um, decided to make a, um, a seven year study with uh, ten different national teams to work out practical training programs to uh, uh, improve mental skills and to make preparation for competition and career and season. And uh, we tried that in the Olympics, 1976 and uh, 1980. And already at that time, we could see a clear relation between those who have used mental training and the result in the Olympics. And now, when the uh, Olympics is going on in uh, Seoul, uh, all of the gold medals we have so far in Sweden uh, has been taken by athletes who have their own mental trainer. Yeah. So it's very natural in Sweden and in some other countries now that if you shall succeed in sport, you need to use mental tr training. Yeah. However, in Sweden, it was important for me to spread it to other areas. Yeah. So uh, the school area was next and then uh, continue with health and other areas. And it was very really good to come from sport yeah. instead of coming from a clinical area. Yeah. Because then this was very natural training, like physical training yeah. for everyone. You don't yeah. need to wait for problems before you start with mental training. No. It's, a, it's a, a sport model where you try to develop all the yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, so, but it's very really fascinating because uh, you have done a lot of study. I think you're one of the few people who have done more than 1,000 studies, I believe, but you have a name. Uh, it has been important to relate uh, mental training to uh, research yeah. uh, and to have a scientific background for the training. Yeah. Because when I started, uh, there was a lot of uh, uh, things that were more mystical yeah. and uh, called New Age movement. And it, it was important from the beginning to separate mental training from the New Age. Yeah. Instead of having a training which was scientifically based yeah. and uh, where we um, also um, evaluate the training all the time in order to improve the methods of mental yeah. training. Yeah, because uh, mental training, you can hear the words uh, every Olympic BBC reporters, CNN reporters, it's a long term. 
Yes. All over the world. Yeah. Uh, after 1976, I went around in the Olympic Village and yeah. asked, is there any sports psychologist here or mental trainer? They didn't know what the mental trainer was and there was no sports psychologist. Sweden was the only one who had a sports psychologist at that time. And uh, after the 1976, the rumor spread uh, that Sweden had something that the, the other countries didn't have. So between 1976 and 1988 in Seoul, I was invited to 12 different countries of the Olympic committees in 12 countries to introduce the mental training. Yeah. Uh, and uh, at I was in Australia a number of times, and in 1988, Australia had four mental trainers in the Olympic uh, team. So between 1976 and 1988, it was kind of explosion yeah. for the interest in other countries, but, and for the Swedish model, but only in sport. So while we in Sweden uh, spread the mental training to all areas of society, it was still so, and still so in today, yeah. the mental training in other countries is more related to sport. Yeah. That's why my goal now is to spread it to human beings uh, outside sport in, in every country. Yeah, I read the article that you, uh, there have been many uh, but you go from Finia, inventions, inventions from coming from freedom. And uh, in the business, the Swedish business newspaper, mental training was number seven, I think, of all uh, inventions coming from Sweden, spreading out in the world. Yes. Uh when I introduced it to business, today more than half of the 100 biggest companies in Sweden use mental training. Yeah. Uh, then uh, uh, they picked out the 100 most important things that has happened during the last 100 years. <laughs> and uh, the, the invention of mental training uh, uh, came number 35 of this Oh, so wrong, but still, it's on the map, and it's very long spread. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, what's important, uh, I think, is to have the, uh, to, uh, by using uh, modern uh, technology like internet now, yeah. It opens up the possibility to spread this as you don't need physical contact. Yeah. You need just instructions, you need training programs uh, recorded and written, books and so in order to start. Yeah. And then start yourself. Uh, my vision with this YouTube channel is to meet people except spreading how I think and so on, to spread um, life destinies. And your life destiny has been mental training, your passion, your purpose. I hear when I see you speak about it, it's like you shine. Yeah, I really feel the passion for this. Yes, when you see uh, how important it can be for a human being, um, those people who say that, uh, say that they have, uh, mental training has saved their life, yeah. they often say, why didn't I meet mental training when I was young? Because then, yeah. then uh, things, life has been different. My wife, before I met her, she had had 70 years of very severe headache, yeah. take pills every week in order not to be uh, staying in bed. Yeah. And then she started mental training and after five weeks of training, uh, she phoned me, it was before we were married, uh, we just knew each other, she phoned me and said, um, last week I didn't have any headache that I had for 70 years. 
It could not be this simple training. And I said, okay, let's wait and see. And now, uh, 20 years later, the headache has not come back. She was almost angry because she said, I have been suffering 70 years and no one has told me that I could get rid of this headache by just such a simple training during yeah. five weeks. And I meet many people who said, who have experience for mental training and said, if I had met mental training when I was um, young, then my life would be different. So that's why we, we are working very much to get it into the school scheme, yeah. so that every, uh, everyone in the school learn mental training while they are uh, growing up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I will point my finger here, because there will be a link to some of your uh, YouTube um, channels where you talk more about mental tra training and so on. Uh, and um, so you have to point the finger because they, they can click. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. and what I like is that you will have the experience how it spread from sport into schools, into business, into different parts of the society in Sweden. And, uh, and I remember when I talked to people, I have been here in Thailand for a long time now, but somebody made me me and so on, and I said, yo, no, I live near La Chirip Street in Thailand. Do we? They are like yellow because you are like a guru for many people in different fields because you are the only person in Sweden because you have spread it. And I like your vision because in the sports world, in the world, it's not but not so much in the school world, in the business world, in different categories. So I really like your vision of 2022, half the world and 27, the rest of the world. I don't want to look at myself as a guru. No, as I know. <laughs> as I like to teach every person to be a guru of themselves. But I am humbled to see that this uh, uh, simple uh, training, which are systematic and long term, yeah. you don't change overnight, uh, can make such a big impact. Yeah. And, uh, I am so. Uh, thrill of uh, now to bring that from Sweden over to other countries, not yeah. only in sport, but yeah. in other areas. And uh, one project that is going on <coughs> is in uh, Iraq. In North Iraq, I, um, I got an invitation from the government to come and introduce mental training for the people there. and. Uh, we had a big conference with 500 uh, doctors and psychologists and uh, uh, teachers and so on, social workers. Uh, and after that, uh, they took out a number of people who should be uh, teaching mental training. But at the same time, we also provided by internet mental training programs for everyone in North uh, Iraq. Uh, with a very good result. Yeah. And um, last year, this was the basic training. Last year, because of the ISIS, I made a special program for mental training for anxiety, worry, fear, which uh, has been spread around uh, and has had big impact uh, on the people there. I also made some special programs for, for instance, one hospital uh, that has uh, people with uh, blood cancer. Yeah. That, uh, and they have to change blood all the time, or regular. Uh, they have the opinion, like a limiting belief, that uh, no 
no one will live longer than 20 years. So most people die before 20 years of age. So I made a program to take away this belief. And we are now looking into to see um, if the survival rate will change. So it can be used uh, in many areas in, in the country from general um, uh, personal development over to specific uh, problem areas. Yeah, and it's very good that you say that it should be your um, Davis what would you give? Flower power culture. Is it for science? Um, but, but, uh, develop technique. Yeah. That, that you can see the people who do it, who don't do it, who do it for you can it's really scientifically proven that it's yeah. work. Uh, one recent uh, study, for instance, uh, uh, I and a colleague took two groups, uh, one group training mentally for yeah. six, six months, <laughs> another group didn't, and we measured their bio biological age, which can yeah. be measured with a special, specific hormone, yeah. DHAS, yeah. Uh, and we measured, measured cortisol and so on. And what we could see was that the uh, control group, they got a, a older yeah. during that time, <laughs> while the experiment group got uh, seven years younger. So their bio biological age diminished seven years during six months. And this is the first time in the world that has been shown that mental methods can, can have such impact on the biological age which is important also when you look at aging as a mental process. Yeah. So, so, I'm sorry, because I told you you were 25, but you were really 14. Since your <laughs> mental capacity has grown, you must be 14 then. <laughs> yeah. Um, the awareness about someone's age is um, uh, affecting the, the, expect the expectation of in people what will happen when I reach a certain age yeah. is uh, one part of what's really happened. So by taking the, this way, it's possible to, to change some of the effects of aging. Which is I, I, have a, I follow uh, a called the Lewy. He is a businessman in America, he has a very big YouTube channel, and he is talking about everything. Everything, how he do his business. Because he find out that it's only one percent who will do it. So he show everything. And he was, he was sitting there with another famous businessman and they were talking and he said can you believe we are 40 years old? I mean, when I was 19, 20, I thought, when you are 35, you are nearly dead. When you are 40, 40 years, you are definitely dead. But I feel he was 40. I'm just starting. I'm just starting my life because it's really mental. Blockage, age, as you yeah, say. Uh, there has been a, a belief in the scientific community that uh, the brain has finished the development about 20 years of age, and after 20 years it goes uh, down because uh, when a nerve cell is lost, for instance, by drinking alcohol, it never comes back. Yeah. So it just goes down and down until you die. And it has been called the decline theory, yeah. where you expect things to happen when you get older and older, in a negative way. Yeah. And uh, a friend of mine, uh, Peter Ersson, showed 15 years ago that this was wrong. First um, in, in, in um, animals and then in human beings. That the, 
the brain continues to create new nerve cells and connections all lifelong. But why it hadn't been detected before he, he did it was that uh, uh, if a nerve cell is not used, it disappears. Yeah. The contact, if not, you are not using the contact, it disappears. So it means that in order to use the new nerve cells that are created by the brain, we have to use it. Yeah. Uh, in order to save it. Yeah. So we have this famous thing now uh, that he created and which is known all over the world, use it or lose it. Yeah. So he and me started a project for old people and people who are working with old people where he talks about this research and I talk about what normally happens when you get retired, yeah. that you uh, start to uh, not using your brain in the same way as before. The mission statement, uh, the feeling of being important goes down. Yeah. Who wants my resources now when yeah. I'm re so, uh, retired? Identity, who am I now when I'm not the profession I had before? The network, all my uh, fellows from, from work, our way. So there are a lot of things that uh, talks uh, that are the explanation why the decline goes so fast after retirement. The mortality increase all over the world the year after mortality, uh, or year after uh, uh, retirement. Yeah. So uh, this area is one area where mental training has become uh, interesting in, in Sweden in the last uh, 50 years. Yeah, it's well known that uh, partners, uh, when one partner dies, the other partner dies very short after. It's like the whole uh, life can't work without the other one. So it's a lot of interesting areas. Yeah. So, other things, um, what, what, what should you recommend? Um, I have talked on my channel on coaching, I have talked on focus on the project, I have talked on uh, find a life purpose uh, on my channel. What, what could you, what, you yeah. want to say? But, uh, when I talk about spreading the mental trend to all people in the world, I'm talking about the introduction. Yeah. Because when you get the introduction, you get uh, interested to continue with other things after. And the introduction, uh, the basic mental training, is not only a base for continuing with mental training and mental preparation for different events, is also very important in itself, especially in our time with a lot of stress-related problems in Sweden. Um, about 70 percent of all sick leaves has to do with stress-related problems. So it has become very important uh, how to prevent it and how to treat when you get a uh, burnout, for instance. Uh, and when you get to burn out, you are told to be home and rest. Yeah. But the problem is that you have lost your ability to rest. Yeah. So when you sit down in the day and try to rest, yeah. uh, the brain goes up in what's called the default mode network and starts to produce less, more energy. So in order to have rest, you need to learn active rest, which is a combination of sitting and laying down, and then uh, focus on breathing, for instance, uh, something happens in, in, in your body. Uh, then the, the brain uh, goes down in activity. In the night, it's very important for uh, to get back to the deep sleep, because the tension, the uh, basic tension in the body who have been uh, built up by the stress prevents the deep sleep. And then it means that you go to bed, you sleep 11, 12 hours, and you are as tired as when you went to bed. 
And then the sick leave can be very long for months and even years. So what, uh, what uh, I pr propose is that we inside two weeks after burnout, before you get chronic, that you start the mental basic training, yeah. take down the, the basic tension in the body, get back, get back the deep sleep, and you get the recovery that is needed. And recovery is very important. We have shown in Sweden that you can work very hard, you can train very hard without any problems if you get enough recovery. If you don't get enough recovery, then even a less number of uh, our uh, work hours can, can get a burnout. So recovery is the main thing today. And the basic mental training, uh, when you learn relaxation mentally and physically, you learn to rest, you learn to uh, recover, you learn to sleep uh, deep, and so on, is very important for, for prevention and for treatment of a burnout. And so your summing up here is that uh, mental training you can use in many different areas, many different stages in your life, and especially when you recover. Recover um, from when normally when you go on a summer holiday, you get sick because the body uh, relax, but really uh, you can prevent it with mental training, for example. So the, your, that's why I wanted you on my channel, so you can express this passion. I know mental training works, but it's much more that other people like you speak, because yeah. they only hear my voice all the time. So that's why I want to do this kind of interviews. Uh, I, uh, we can say that mental training is three parts. The first is the basic mental training, which is a preparation for mental training, but also has an effect in itself that I explained with the burnout thing. The second is the mental training, which are divided in two areas. One is the personal development, where you develop your self-image, the goal image, the attitude to life, and you also have an emotional uh, uh, development training. And the other area is the problem solving, uh, solving different problems with mental training. Yeah. And it goes from everything in, in the behavior programs over to prepare for uh, having a child, childbirth, uh, or it, it can be uh, uh, problems in, in business or uh, schools and so on. Yeah. And the third area is preparation for the future. And for yeah. In-personal development is uh, to create your own future, create very clear goals, uh, and then or brave goals, and then translate that to images. And this is the difference between uh, ordinary goal setting and mental training goal setting. Because in ordinary goal setting, when you have brave goals, it often creates stress. Yeah. So in mindfulness, there is a little hesitation for brave goals because of the stress it can create. Yeah. But in mental training, we solve that by taking the goals or the images and then program the goals in the in the mental room, in, yeah. in the basic uh, relaxed state. And by programming, we have a um, we have a force taking us through the goals by itself. Yeah. While we can live in the present. So we can have a mindfulness situation living in the present on the way to the goals. Yeah. Which is very important. The second uh, in the preparation for future is to prepare for certain events. Can be uh, things that uh, we are afraid of speaking in public or whatever. Yeah. In the police academy in, uh, in Sweden, where they have mental training for one year, uh, when they have learned mental training, then they take the situations in the future which ordinarily give stress. 
like they are provoked by people or that someone starts to shoot at them. In the police instruction, there are clear instructions how to handle that situation. But unfortunately, when you come in this situation and you get stressed, yeah. you act in the wrong way and then you are accused afterwards. But by taking these instructions, getting images, and then in the mental room, see yourself handle the situation in the right way. Mm -hmm. Then they will automatically handle the situation in a, in a good way. Yeah. Uh, even if they uh, should be afraid or something when they come there. So yeah. this is some examples of all the different use that can be done with the mental training. Yeah. I really thank you for letting me record you. I hope next time you come to Thailand we can do a follow-up. Uh, uh, I will talk more about those lyrics and uh, projects what we have done. I have done some movies about mental training, but <coughs> not really focused on the whole mental training idea. So maybe I will do a theory about that. We see what happens. The painting here is uh, it's like a mental room. I can explain some yes. other time about this painting. Yes. So very, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. You want to say something? I am very grateful for uh, in my last book. This is uh, on the first page. And, uh, it, uh, this tree of life uh, is a very important painting for me too. Thank yes. you very much. Thank you.